trying to stay healthy, trying to live longer, man, trying to live to 100. You know what I'm saying, boys? It's like they've been riding, you've been biking or some shit, man, or working out or something. Man, you, you, you really been taking that shit serious, fool. Like, what what, what was the, the change? Because, you know, if you've been following Killer Callion, you know, you know what I'm saying? You were, you were a bigger guy, you know what I'm saying? And probably the last, like, 10 or so years, you just really been on that health real, real tough, yeah, man. Yeah, so for, for two reasons, man. I, I actually, man, a lot of people don't know, man, like, about 2009, 2010, man, I um, was racially profiled in Atlanta. I ended up catching a assault with a deadly weapon case. And I got woke up out of my sleep with guns to my head. They planted a gun on me, everything. And they said they was looking, the description was a big nigga with tattoos. Drop that weight. And then that was No part, shit, wait, yeah, what? Just, it, just, ran, just some random shit. Yeah, man, we had something going on. I had um, a session that morning, we had rented out a house in Alpharetta, Georgia. Some friends of mine. And um, they ended up inviting some chicks over. A couple of my friends went there inviting some chicks over. And the chicks was drunk out their mind. A white chick and a black chick drunk out their motherfucking mind. And if anybody familiar with Alpharetta, Georgia, that shit is like racist as fuck. And um, the girls end up Friends of mine ended up kicking the chicks out. I was asleep at the time. I had a nine in the morning session with Jazzy Faye. And um, I had to be up the next morning. I was out there recording. And um, the chicks ended up calling the police on some drunk, dumb shit. And when the, um, the police came, they was looking for a big dude with tattoos. I was the big nigga, tatted up. No full description of the man or nothing. One of my friends that was actually one of the producers that I was working with at the time, he had a he had a he had a gun and had a permit for the gun. So when they searched everybody, they brought everybody downstairs, they immediately put me in handcuffs. The big nigga with tattoos. No nothing woke me up out of my sleep. I had I had no knowledge of nothing that was going on. They said that I had a gun. They took the gun out of the producer's bag attached that gun to me and said I was the big nigga with tattoos, pointed a gun at the chicks and all that, and they identified me. I ended up beating the case. And the thing about in Atlanta, bro, to where when I went to court, my attorney made sure that they didn't let them know that I rapped or anything. Because if you rap in Fulton County, bro, they gonna hang your ass. So I pretty much beat the case, man. And how I beat the case, how they tried to identify me, like where the car was parked, where they tried to identify and say I was the big dude, I pointed a gun at them and all this shit. The car, the car was down there, fit, it was no way that they could identify me or they didn't even see me or do nothing. Long story short, it was some bullshit. And I, I pretty much, they did docketed the case. So what was fucked up about a dead docketing is that if I catch any type of charge in the state of Georgia, even if, even if it's been like 11 years, they can bring that up and attach it to whatever else I got going on. Oh, man. Yeah, so that shit just made me just get into my bag on knowing the law a lot more and getting myself in shape because big nigga with tattoos, I'm a black man with tattoos. They didn't fully identify me or none of that. And I was like, and then just, nigga, I wanted to look good with this shit off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah.